from the Olympics over claims of unfair judging. Hear what sparked the controversy. Also tonight, pin trading fans take on an Olympic athlete in what's become the most popular participation sport of the game. See what it takes to keep dozens of tracks trains running on time. And join us atop the mountain perch of nightly news. Eyewitness This is the number one Eyewitness News at 10. Stop making toys out of, uh, out of the athletes and the coaches. Angered by a string of decisions against its athletes, Russia today issued an ultimatum. Investigate unfair judging or the Russians go home. Good evening, I'm Dick Norris. Hello, I'm Nadine Wimmer. That threat came in a news conference this afternoon, hours after one of Russia's top athletes was disqualified because of high levels of hemoglobin in a pre-race blood test. Larissa Lazutino was left out of today's cross-country race. The Russians deny this gold medal favorite is guilty of doping. Results of a urine test expected tomorrow will determine whether Lazutino was drug positive. The Russians say they're also upset by the decision in the pair's figure skating dispute, an unspecified ruling by a judge in an ice hockey match, and they say a, a high number of their athletes have been picked for drug tests. Altogether, they say it shows a lack of respect for the Russian team. If these issues are not resolved, the Russian team will not play hockey, will not run 30 kilometer, and will definitely look very negatively upon the future. The IOC has addressed the situation and is tonight urging the Russians not to act hastily. The Russians say if they're not satisfied, they may pull out of the Athens Summer Olympics as well. The IOC tonight rejected a similar complaint filed by the South Korean team. They're upset about last night's decision to disqualify a South Korean short track speed skater. That decision gave Apollo Ono the gold. Meantime, the FBI is investigating 40 threatening emails sent to Ono after his first race last Saturday. The threats are non-specific, and the FBI does not consider them credible. There are no complaints from the U.S. Olympic team. American athletes have enjoyed a medal parade. They now have more than doubled the previous medal total for any previous Winter Olympic game. The U.S. team has 30 medals, including 10 gold. One of those medals, the silver, went to Bodie Miller today, making him the first American man to win an Olympic medal in the giant slalom. Olympic specialist Shelly Osterlo was there and joins us live from Park City now with that story. Shelly. Well, Dick, just as he did in the combine, Bodie Miller pulled out another amazing second run to win the silver. Now, in giant slalom, the uh, times of two runs are added together after the first run. Bodie was in seventh place, so the pressure was on. In that aggressive Miller style, Bodie really poured it on, leaning way back on his skis and bashing gates. He said he couldn't have skied any faster, and he was happy to do it in front of this huge Olympic crowd. It was awesome. You know, I could hear him coming down on the flats, and um, you know, I just wanted to race a great race today. It was, it was uh, my mom's here, and I just, I, I feel really happy with it. I think I did my best today. Well, not such a good day for Park City's Eric Schlopey. He had a great first run going until he slid off course and missed a gate. It was Stefan Eberharder who won the gold, and that's just what he needed for his medal collection. He already has a silver from the Super G and a bronze in the downhill. And Lasse Schuess of Norway won the bronze. That makes five Alpine Olympic medals for him. Now, both of Bodie Miller's Silver medals are historic. Never before, at least not until today, has an American man won a medal in either the giant slalom or the combined. And look out, because Bodie's best event is yet to come in the slalom. And he'll be racing in the slalom with his teammate and friend, Eric Schlopey. So we can look forward to that. Dini? All right, we will. Thanks, Shelley. The gold medal game in women's hockey ended in silver for the U.S. The rivalry between the Canadian and American women has been anything but predictable. Americans won all eight pre-Olympic exhibition games against Canada. But tonight, the Canadians ended Team USA's winning streak with a final score of 3-2. to two. Now, as an Olympic participation sport, nothing is as popular, I mean nothing, among the masses as pen trading. Oh, new specialist Sandra <laughs> Yee was at the first ever Coca-Cola Olympic Pin Trading Championship, and she joins us live. Sandra, did you pick up any new pins? Well, Dini and Dick, I didn't have any pins to trade, but someone did give me this Coca-Cola media pin, and I think I'll hang on to this one. Some other lucky people were given a handful of pins to swap today. The championship bout was fun and friendly and even included a celebrity trader. All right, pin traders ready? Five, four, three, two, one, go. Do you have any pins you want me to 
don't trick me. Do you have any new ones? The race is on. Seven enthusiasts try to pin the most Olympic pins in 15 minutes. Do you want to trade that one with me? Each were given an assortment of pins to swap for a more valuable and diverse collection. That one? Sure. Katrina Van Brooklyn made some deals, but wouldn't part with her Ekaterina Gordieva pin. It's been like way fun to go around and meet all the people with all the pins and how many Olympics they've been to and stuff. Katrina competed against seven other contestants, including figure skater Ekaterina Gordieva, for pin trading gold. I trade one uh, Coca-Cola hat, um, Coca-Cola bottle, <laughs> that Roslyn Sumner's, and it's. Uh, I know her very well, so it's a good friend of mine, so it was very interesting and it spins like this. And trading under pressure tested her skills. In a matter of minutes, the race was over. Time is up. 15 minutes. Stop your training. And the judging began. We've got the missionaries on the bicycles. We've got Tony the Tiger. Three traders received a gold, silver, or bronze medal, but everyone went home a winner. And if you haven't tried it, let, tried it yet, let me warn you, pin trading can be very addicting. But experts say don't get caught up in the hype of some of the pins out there because they will lose their value after the Olympics. Experts say the best pins to collect are those that have a special meaning to you. Very good advice. Dick and Dini, back to you. You're keeping the Coca-Cola media pin? I sure am. Oh, darn Sorry. it. <laughs> All right, thanks, Sandra. This murder is an act of barbarism. It makes a mockery of everything that Danny's kidnappers claim to believe in. Sad news to reports in the case of the missing Wall Street Journal reporter. Who is responsible for his death? The latest next. It takes a snowmobile to reach their set atop the Wasatch Mountains. Go behind the scenes of nightly news. And an ambassador for kids reports back from the Olympics. That's a little later on. The barometer readings are very high across Utah. Santa Ana winds. It was 93. Hot spot in the country. Meantime, Utah Strawberry Reservoir, minus 12, cold spot. Salt Lake City, we were near normal, but not tomorrow. The forecast coming up. The State Department today confirmed the death of Wall Street Journal reporter Daniel Pearl. Diplomats have received a videotape that shows him being killed by his captors. Pearl was kidnapped a month ago while trying to interview Islamic militants. The chief suspect, Omar Saeed, is already in custody. He claims Pearl was killed during an attempt to escape. No survivors yet among the 12 soldiers on board an army helicopter which crashed into the sea near the Philippines. The search has only turned up wreckage and debris. The crew was flying Chinook helicopters like these here. Authorities don't believe the chopper was attacked in any way. A broken sprinkler pipe nearly washed away a home in the avenues. Waters created a mudslide in a small area of the backyard, and firefighters were concerned about the stability of the house. They shut off the water, they deemed the house sta safe, but teams suspect this won't be the only case where pipes break with this warmer weather. We don't stop. Um, I work nine hours straight. Yep, they race the clock to keep Olympic visitors on schedule. See what it takes to keep light rail rolling next, after tonight's current conditions. Eyewitness Weather is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, the low fare leader for 30 years. Over the last couple of weeks, NBC has broadcast its nightly news program from right here in Utah. And today, our Sam Penrod got a look at behind the scenes and what it takes to put nightly news on the air. Deanie, putting together a newscast like we do every day takes a lot of resources. At the network level, it requires an enormous amount. And taking that broadcast on the road to the Utah mountains is a project of Olympic proportions. Reporting tonight from the Olympic Winter Games in Salt Lake City. This picturesque view of the Wasatch Mountains is the backdrop for NBC Nightly News during the Olympics. What's not visible is the remote location, a 9,000-foot mountaintop above Park City at the Canyon Ski Resort. What's great about it is, to us, this, this speaks Salt Lake City and the whole region. It takes a crew of dozens of people to handle a very complicated technical operation. And the only access to this temporary NBC News studio is by ski lift or snowmobile. In the corner of a nearby mountaintop restaurant, Brokaw and his producers work to assemble the newscast. Olympic news today overshadowed 
by several developing stories across the world. I'm Tom Brokaw tonight. We've been able to cover the news from here and also, I think, reflect to the country what's going on in terms of the Winter Olympic Games. Anchoring the news from the Utah mountains has been a hit with Brokaw and his nightly news team. We're out here with a great backdrop. Uh, they're skiing to work every day. It's uh, the stage job is tough duty. And Brokaw believes the Utah Olympics have been successful and offered the country something beyond athletic competition. I think America was um, longing for this kind of an experience, something to celebrate. Uh, we've been through a tough time, and uh, it's time to have a little diversion. There's been a lot of local interest in an interview Brokaw had with LDS Church President Gordon B. Hinckley back in November, and portions of that interview are scheduled to air tomorrow night during NBC Nightly News and also during NBC's primetime Olympic coverage. Dick and Dini. All right. Thank you, Sam. And so far, they haven't had a whole lot of bad weather to contend with. No, on plenty that of snow top, up there. Remarkable. It snowed yeah. on anything once, but just absolutely remarkable. However, nice. We need snow. We do we need do. snow. We need we need the snow badly today. The sun was out. The temperatures were only in the 60s, but oh, not the 60s here. 60s in St. George. Looks like it was around the 40s here, but people were out strolling around, just enjoying things. And you know what? Tomorrow looks even warmer. Well, comfortable it may be, but the snowpack is what determines how much water comes into the reservoirs next summer. In the north, that's not very good. The highest is the Weber Ogden, the Uintas. Whoa, two-thirds of normal. And in the south, look at the Virgin. People who live in St. George look up and they see Pine Valley Mountain, and there's hardly any snow at all. State average, dismal. This is bad. This is our fourth year in a row of substandard snowpack. Now, it can change. March, April, May, those are the three critical months. If we get it then, we might pull out. If we don't, we are in a world of hurt. How's the rest of the West doing? Well, there's a bright spot. The Pacific Northwest, the extreme kind of coastal areas, much above normal snowpack. Then in this area, it's near normal. But look at Utah. Utah is in the much below category. Montana is hurting. Wyoming is hurting. Eastern Idaho is hurting. And it all depends on Mother Nature. For the next three months, starting in March, we'll hope, we'll hope that we get the big snows. Today, we had pleasant temperatures. Blanding, 53 degrees. A lot of 40s run. 40s are normal, and it's kind of nice to get back to normal. The deep snow cover in Cache Valley keeps those temperatures way colder than usual. Pleasant Grove 50, Provo 51, and those are just kind of a taste of things to come for tomorrow as the warm air surges north. St. George dipped back to the 60s today, should be back to the 70s coming up for the next day or two. What's going on with the clouds? Well, a storm system keeps ripping into the northwest around Seattle where they've had big time rains. We are getting some high, thin, wispy clouds, but this little arc means high pressure. The jet stream's way up here, and this high pressure is moving over, so we should have mostly sunny skies and mild temperatures. Dry tomorrow, storminess here. What about Saturday? Ooh, the jet stream comes flying back down. This should be the stormy zone. The heaviest might be in the mountains out of Logan up towards uh, Yellowstone Park. But at least there's something coming. It doesn't look bad enough to hurt Olympic activities, but it also doesn't look enough to really help with the uh, drought situation. So tomorrow, 50s, 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 70s, around Washington and St. George and Hurricane and Laverkin. Sunshine is the dominant word. There may be some high, thin clouds, but comfortable, comfortable tomorrow. St. George, 72, 70, and then it dips to the 60s, which is normal. Wasatch Front, the first number is going to be red. That means significantly warmer than usual. Then we get some storminess on Saturday. It looks like valley rain there may be there may be some bench snow in the mountains how about two inches at the ski at the venues at the uh, snow venues we'll take what well, we can kinda, get yeah that's kind of nice that'll add some it flavor yeah. 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 57 wow mm. the olympics produces its fair share of unsung heroes and there's one group in particular that's been working at a feverish pitch in the early morning hours when most of us were asleep our Ed Yates is about to take us on a special trip. He's live from 4th South in Salt Lake City. Ed, what's up? Well, Dick, we just missed the train. It's just pulling out. But tracks trains have been picking up these crowds every eight minutes for the past 13 days. But wait until you see the uh, after-hours place where they groom these trains for the next day. It's an Olympic event all its own. 
62 trains, some our own, others from Dallas Rapid Transit on loan for the games, roll into UTA's Lovendale Center in the wee hours of the morning. Now a new crowd jumps on board, picking up trash, mopping, vacuuming, and polishing glass and chrome. We have to get these trains out every four minutes, because if we don't get them out every four minutes, uh, we're not going to make it out on the line on time. While crews clean, inspectors on other cars check doors and rotating seats. In the cabs, they test controls, ringing bells and blowing horns. In the pit, electromechanics check the undercarriages. And on top, the overcarriages. Uh, Donna wants to move the train. Let's go, you guys. Like some NASCAR event, time here waits for no one, even uh, when we're trying to do an interview. So are we supposed to get off the train? Yes, we sir. Get out here? Okay. We have to uh, have them all clean and have them all set to go out. And now that might be in certain order, so it's pretty stressful. I have never worked with a greater group of people right now who have spirited around the Olympics to get things done. Move them in, clean them up, roll them out. The final station through the train wash. Then park and wait, but only for a while. The first train moves out at 4.40 a.m., then the second. A new day of Olympic crowds are waiting. Last Saturday, we carried 90,000 people on tracks alone. Uh, we're more than doubling our daily bus ridership. Visitors apparently have been leaving a lot of things on the train, from cell phones to Olympic pins. Cleanup crews have also been finding sacks filled with empty beer cans stacked neatly so they don't topple over something they affectionately have uh, nicknamed Tidy Trash. Back to you. <laughs> All right. Glad you got off of there, Ed. Yeah, before they kicked you off. <laughs> Thanks. Well, you just saw the exciting results of women's figure skating, the Americans taking the gold and bronze and a surprising finish. Carol Makita was at the Salt Lake Ice Center for the big finish, and she joins us now with the thrill and the heartbreak, too. It was an amazing experience this evening to hear this crowd roar at the top of its lungs for every American skater, and certainly heartbreak. Uh, I'm sorry you won't have a chance to hear our uh, interview with Michelle Kwan this evening, but we saw Sarah Hughes go from a little girl two days ago to a young woman, and what a skate she had this evening. She really came into her own, and we were behind the scenes, and it was electric, it was magic. And here's what she had to say. Sarah, you said the Salt Lake audience was great to you after the short program. Yeah. How about tonight? They seem to explode. Wow, I know. It was great, wasn't it? Uh, you know, there was such a loud roar. When I finished my program, I couldn't even hear the end of my music. <laughs> and I just thought, wow, they're, it's amazing. They're on their feet. And that's something that every skater tries to accomplish. It was magical. Yeah. I, if there was any performance, if, there, if I can do that performance anywhere, it would be here. American gold on American ice. Have one more chance to see these skaters. They will skate in an exhibition, all of the winners from all four divisions, ladies, men's, pairs, and ice dancers, tomorrow evening, right here. And we'll have uh, more for you tomorrow from all of our American team. Very good, Carol. All Thanks. right. So we've still got the figure skating and the ice hockey sharing all the attention. Mm -hmm. East Center, the place to be these yeah. days. Tough night for the USA women, but now we yeah. start to talk about the Russians and the American men tomorrow night. More. From hockey, agony, and ecstasy, there's a major NBA trade in the Jazz division to tell you about, and you won't believe Gene Racine's latest move. Details next in sports.